There are dozens of free items being added to Fallout 76 with the upcoming Still Dawn DLC, and I'm about to show you some of them. Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. First of all, I want to apologize for not publishing any videos in the past few days, but that's because I've been facing some issues with my editing software, which forced me to update to the latest version, and in the process my templates got messed up, some pre-edited footage got lost, among other issues. Yep, it's really annoying. Anyway, I managed to finish this video, so here we are. Let me present you over 20 new items coming live with the Still Dawn DLC. Most of it, if not all, are free items, which will be added to existing reward pools, such as daily ops, holiday scorched, and even new quests. Mm -hmm. All the following items are live on the public test server on PC right now, just to let you know. With that being said, let's start with this item overview. One of the most anticipated items recently is the cave diving suit, which was, and still is, a very popular item in Fallout 4. Now it's finally coming to Fallout 76 and it's going to be a free reward from the upcoming Brotherhood of Steel questline. The suit is made of metal and it's quite rusty at this point. I think it aged pretty fine. Anyhow, this item is obviously for swimming or diving purposes, as the name indicates. It allows you to breathe underwater, it even displays a unique sound of you or your character breathing oxygen from the bottle. This means you should be able to stay underwater as long as you want. Or maybe not really. This suit should make you immune to water diseases and water radiation, but right now on the PTS, it's not working very well. The disease part seems to be working just fine. However, if you are exploring toxic waters, you will take radiation. So eventually, you need to get out or use radaways to heal little amounts of rads, or else you will die. Let's hope this bug will get fixed before the final release, because you're supposed to be protected from this type of damage, so it's a shame if this item goes live with this sort of issue, which is totally against the item description. So let's hope for the best. Another free item coming with the Brotherhood of Steel quests is the Brotherhood Roundtable. It's a reward from the Forging Crust quest, to be more precise here. However, there is a small issue with this table. It's currently a park bench. Yeah, I'm not sure. But as the either didn't finish the table's model yet, or they added the wrong visual path. You know, code mistakes happen all the time, especially with Fallout 76. Either way, this item has been data mined already, so I'm leaving some images here to give you guys an idea how the table should and will most likely look like when it goes live. Pretty promising, huh? High-tech strategy table to plan your battles ahead. Bring it on! Now, moving to the new Daily Ops rewards, let me show you the camouflage hazmat suit. It looks very similar to the Emet one, but with a military camouflage paint on it. I have tested this item as well, and just like the cave diving suit, it's not working very well. When you enter toxic waters, you will take radiation as if you weren't wearing a hazmat suit at all. It's not that convenient, huh? However, it seems to protect you from any other radiation sources, like petrified exposed bodies or radiation barrels all over the place. So at least something. I'm expecting this suit to be working 100% when it hits the official servers, but only time will tell. There is a new roof light coming with daily ops as well. It's called the Azulum Light and it's actually the same model you can find inside Fort Defiance. For example, it's like a metal chandelier with three lamps. I can say it looks fancy or elegant, but it will surely match a metal camp if you decide to go for it. Your workshop room and such workplaces will be a nice match to this kind of lamp too. It is certainly a nice addition or a quite different one, that's true, but it increases the lamp diversity, so why not? 
Take it and enjoy, it's free on top of that. The daily ops are highly known for giving sign rewards, especially the Boros. Oh yeah, I tend to get them very often, but now we are getting one more entry, this time for the Amet Mountain. We are getting six new signs that can be found inside the Amet disposal location. They are mostly related to radiation warnings, since this place is highly radioactive, but there are two that feature different types of warnings. One is to inform you cannot photograph in the area, and the other one is about not trespassing very straightforward. Anyway, one note here, the yellow and red warning sign seems to be a bit bugged and almost everything will overlap it right now, such as walls and paints. It's difficult to place it properly. Other than that, it's a great collection to have, especially if you have radiation sources at your camp. Now you have a proper way to warn other players. Crowd Benches is another new plan from Daily Ops and it will add two huge park benches to the cheers section. Now, these chairs allow multiple players to sit at once. If I'm not wrong, the smaller one allows four players to sit and the largest one allows six players at the same time. I think these new items are a great choice to build churches, cult places and such concepts with a lot of people. Anyway, yes, they are green, therefore they will not color match with a lot of items, but they can take a lot of people at once, so it surely has its value and purpose. Still, from Daily Ops, there is a new alternative stash box on the way. It's made of meat and it's simply disturbing and disgusting at the same time. Yeah, it's basically a pile of meat put together with metal chains in a square shape and you can clearly see decomposing human limbs taking from the meat. I surely wouldn't want one of these at my camp, but again, it has its purpose. For Blood Eagle fans, for example, this item might be very appealing and for Cult of the Mod Man fans, this item might as well be seen as some sort of sacrifice item. You never know. So for role playing, I think this item is amazing. What do you think? Now, let's move on to the upcoming Holiday Scorch rewards for this year. There are tons of them and they are all free. You just need to get lucky and roll whatever you want or you are missing. First of all, we have the Mutant Tube, which is basically a science or research item, ideal for your lab or med bay if you have one. You cannot interact with it, sadly, so it's just a decor item for display. There is an egg super mutant floating in a green, solution inside the glass tube and that's pretty much all there is to mention about this new item besides looking really cool and unique in its own way. Next, we have a very cute addition to the Holiday Scorch rewards. It's also a decor item, the Brahmin plushie. Instead of red pink, this one is blue and each face has a different expression. One is actually winking at you and the other has the tongue sticking out, just like standard emotes. So it's a nice detail there in case you didn't notice already. On the back, the tail is straight up and there are some freckles on the skin which makes this plushie even more cute and a must-have at your camp. You can even stack them up for the ultimate plushie display. Hmm, I like to do that, even though it doesn't serve any purpose, but it's something different, something you can do. For those of you who love statues, then let me bright your day. Bethesda is adding a new Civil War monument with rifles and a sword in the middle. There are also some stars on the very top and a cup for some sort of tribute, I guess. The monument looks the exact same on both sides, apart from the letters at the very bottom, which says Philippi Cemetery, which is an existing location in game already with a lot of other graves and all sorts of monuments there. Also, this is how this item looks like when it's destroyed. It's quite interesting, actually. I think I like it better this way, to be honest with you. 
Now, let's move on to the free costumes. First of all, we have the communist commander outfit and hat that form a full costume, of course. If your dream was ever to look like a Russian general in Fallout 76, then cheer up, because this winter you will be able to dress like one. From head to toe, you can roleplay a communist general by wearing the outfit and the matching hat, which looks typically Russian. Moreover, the outfit has some military details, such as the rank strips and some ammo on the belt. The Jaguar pantsuit is one of my favorite upcoming outfits so far, probably because I kinda like such patterns, as long as they are synthetic of course. Animal slaughter for fashion use is pure cruelty in my view. Anyway, this outfit is very elegant and eye-catching. You will wear a black shirt with black shoes and then a pantsuit filled with Jaguar sort of dot patterns. The best thing about this costume is that that is virtual, right? So it doesn't matter where it came from or how it was made. Next, we have the Tulip Sky Blue Pantsuit, which is very eccentric in my view. It's very colorful with the cyan as the base color and then tulips all over the suit, as the name says, which are orange and green in this case. There is a great detail on this outfit if you zoom in close. Too bad this outfit is kinda dirty, you can clearly see muddy parts on the lower legs and lower arms. I guess a clean version of this suit will eventually come out at some point. Now, let's return to camp items. One of the new sleeping bags is the poodle one, which uses a cyan color as the background as well, and then you can see a poodle dog in pink colors. Very fancy. Why did Bethesda decide to add such random item though, you may ask? I have no idea. It's really random and I guess it follows the Princess Castle team. We already have a few of these items, pink and cute and fancy, so this is just another one for the collection, I suppose. Talking about such princess items, well, there is another sleeping bag that comes straight from the Disney World, or at least it looks like it. The Princess Castle sleeping bag features some awesome artwork with a dark background and then a princess sitting on her bed, which by the way looks very similar to Rampuzel from Tangled, don't you think so? I really do. I wonder if Bethesda bought some sort of copyright or if it just looks really, really similar to that specific Disney princess. Anyway, this sleeping bag is really pretty, the art is amazing and it could even serve as a decor item or even as a carpet. On the topic of spectacular items, there is another bizarre decor item on the way called the Mole Rat Wind Chime and this one is made of Mole Rat bones, basically. It's such a creative entry though, the bones form a Mole Rat figure which bounces and creates a very unique sound, just like pieces of wood touching one another. The bones also reflect the environment color very easily, which makes it blend in any indoors room or outdoor space. In this case, I had the fireplace active just under it, and as you can see, the bones are slightly orange and pink. Ah, it's such a lovely item. I really want this one for my camp. Another interesting addition to the game is this truck lamp. It's a very creative ceiling light, to say the least. But as they basically use the red truck model we have already in game, yes, the real one, and transformed it into a small and cozy lamp. There are three trucks, and the lamp will come out of the cargo part. The lamp covers are quite colorful too. Isn't that just lovely? I would say this fits a kid's room the best, but since we have no children at camps yet, I think this will match best with red items, of course. When you turn it on, though, it generates a rather yellowish light, just to let you know. 
Moving to the signs now, there is a new one from Holiday Scorch 2020, the condemned warning sign. It's a quite boring one in my opinion, with an orange background, black outlines and black letters. It basically asks other players to do not trespass because the respective property is condemned by the authority of the Watauga Safety Commission. Uh, yeah, I think it's best to stick to the non-trespassing message and that's it. If you love neon lights, then you will be happy to know Bethesda is adding a few more very soon. The first one is a simple hello, ideal to place at your front door or lobby room. As a way to say hello to your guests, friends or visitors, I guess, but it could have many other uses. Anyway, this light sign has two cyan borders and the hello word is written in white. As I said, it's a rather simple neon sign, nothing very special. There is another neon sign coming as well, the open one, straight to the point with this message and it looks a bit more refined than the previous hello sign. It comes with a sign border as well, but this time the background is dark red and the open word itself glows in a light red pinkish between both. It's quite flashy and eye-catching, ideal to let other players know where your vending machines are and or which one are actually active. Well, we are getting closer to the end of the list. There are several new matching vault items coming for shelters and lots of them will be given to you for free by completing the upcoming quest Home Expansion. One of the items is already live for testing on the PTS, the vault door, and it looks high-tech as hell. Right now you can add it to your camp, but that probably won't be possible when it gets officially released. Anyway, this is an automatic door, it doesn't require any power source, and it also has a green and red lights. Green for when the door is open and red when it's closed. It's very straightforward. It looks the same on both sides. Lastly, this vault door requires a wall frame to place right now, even though it overlaps most of the frame itself. I'm not sure if it will work the same exact way in the future. Alright, the last item in this video is a very unique one. It's called the Fancy Performance Stage and it's unclear how you will be able to get it. Right now it's labeled as an atomic shop item according to data miners, but Bethesda has been labeling basically every new item as atomic shop and then later over time they changed the names to fit the respective reward pools. So this item could very well be a free reward from an upcoming quest or event. We don't know yet. Either way, this stage looks really, really fancy, as the name says. It even has wooden engravings on the sides. However, it requires power for the lights to, well, turn on. Yes, you can interact with it. The downside here is that the stage lights are rather weak and they don't illuminate much, mostly the surrounding floor parts, and that's it. Anyhow, this is a really great item to place at your bar, restaurant or lobby room surrounded by instruments and activity. Oh yeah, for the entertainment, right? At least I think so. The Steel Dawn and Fracture Steel DLCs are supposed to come live in a couple of months and this is just a short preview of all the new and free items joining the Wasteland. There are many more on the way including new armor and weapons so stay tuned for more item overviews like this one. Bethesda is creating new content and updating the PTS constantly so it's natural that more and more items will emerge or get this discovered by data miners. Either way, that's it for this video. Let me announce here that my Halloween event for this year is now live. Feel free to submit your best screenshot to earn awesome prizes, including a 25 euro Amazon voucher. You can check the details in your screen right now and join my Discord by clicking on the link below the video if you want to participate. Well, that's everything for now. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe 
subscribe for more content like this. And well, I am Marta Branco. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all very, very soon in the next video. Until then, take care. Adios. Bye bye.